the Peel District School Board has banned weekend emails from Friday evening to Monday morning, which sounds like uh, an interesting, almost, you know, like incredibly out there concept. Uh, but is it? We know that this happened in France. Was it earlier this year? The, uh, no, the no work emails outside business hours for people in France. The France, France, uh, French government pushed through the law, which gave workers the right to disconnect. And some feel Canadian workers should be entitled to the same treatment. Joining us uh, this morning right now, Stuart Redner, who is an employment lawyer and um, and uh, joining us to, to tell us about what this means for Canada. Good morning to you, Stuart. How are you? Oh, good morning, Jennifer. Thanks for having me on. I, should... I was listening to your last segment. I find it interesting that we've gone from talking about uh, students doing homework <laughs> to uh, adults doing work while at home on email. It's a very, it's very true. I should mention that you're a partner at Redner McDonald LLP. Just to uh, get that in there too. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it's, it's kind of, they kind of contradict each other. If we're going to tell students that no, you're not going to do homework, or you, or it doesn't help you to do homework, but yet then we're going to put our faces into our devices to answer 700 work <laughs> emails. I mean, it really is a contradictory message. Message, isn't it? Uh, it absolutely is, and I, I struggle with that with my kids at home and how much homework it seems like they have overwhelming amounts sometimes. But that's kind of the point of uh, why the Peel District Board uh, took this step is the overwhelming amounts of email. Uh, so I, I, in a sense, they're somewhat consistent, different issues but similar. Uh, but uh, this one's interesting, and I have to say, uh, without bragging, that two and a half years ago, my law partner Natalie McDonald and I wrote an article on this very issue, uh, talking about the email epidemic and the issues it was going to raise for employers and really expecting that employers were going to start taking steps like this to control the expectations. So I, I'm not surprised and I would expect to see more employers taking steps, maybe in different ways, but one way or another to control the expectations that employees feel with respect to email outside of work hours. Yeah, and it's funny because I, I, I'm not an instantaneous email responder. I never have been. And I almost I almost find it kind of laughable the way somebody will send me an email. And if I don't respond immediately, they <laughs> just assume that their way is the only way and that that is how, you know, that you must be at the beck and call of email. And I, I just don't live my life that way. So it's I've I, people's I've been surprised by people's reaction to that more like, well, how is that even possible? Somebody sends you an email. It's like a phone ringing. You have to answer it. But I don't. I don't feel like I need to be Pavlov's dog in that way. I've never really done it that way. I think you're probably smarter than I am uh, because I tend to be a very quick responder, and I've tried to change that lately, but it's, it's a challenge once you get used to it. Uh, but, I mean, the interesting thing is, and part of the point that we often make with our clients is, you know, over the last decade, what I've often said is employers were giving out, I used to say, blackberries like candy to everybody in the organization. Now, of course, it could be an iPhone, it could be an Android, or it could be just bring your own device where they're giving everyone email access. But one way or the other, we've, we've created this problem because mm -hmm. employers just gave everybody access to their email in their hand 24 seven without any regard as to who or the nature of the person's position. So yeah, you, want, you probably want your CEO available 24 seven, but you don't need to give all of your staff that access. But as soon as you do, and as soon as somebody starts to say, hey, my boss is emailing me at 9 o'clock at night, I better answer. Otherwise, I might you know, be in trouble or I might lose my job. Career-limiting move. Exactly. You don't <laughs> want to wait till the next morning. So now so many people are in the habit of checking at night or checking first thing in the morning and not waiting till the next day. And, of course, people are getting smarter and realizing, hey, wait a minute, that's work. It doesn't matter if I'm at my desk or if I'm in my lazy boy chair at home. That's work if I'm reading and responding to emails, and I should be paid for it. So the p potential liability that employers have is huge for all of this time that people are working and, in most cases, not being paid. So tell me how this came about with the Peel District School Board specifically. Like, what was the, uh, what was the story and the backstory into why they've banned, you know, weekend emails? Is it, that they, is it that, you know, the teachers or a specific group within the board, you know, said, listen, if we're going to be checking emails, like you said, from your lazy boy, then we're going to be compensated for that? Or did, what did it come from within the board itself that said, okay, okay let's kind of, you know, st stop this? Uh, before it gets out of control and just say, you know, you are under no obligation to respond to work emails on the weekends. Yeah, I'll be perfectly honest. I, I don't know the backstory there. I have no inside information at all. You probably know more than I do about what happened. Um, and I know what the message was. Uh, but was there an underlying tension of perhaps the union saying, hey, if teachers are getting emails from, you know, principals or administrators on the weekends and they need to answer, they should be paid? I don't know. But that's the underlying current 
that I'm seeing more broadly within the workplace, where it's, it's one of two things. Either we're seeing people who are answering emails at all times, nights, nights and weekends, and now they say, wait a minute, I'm, I'm not a manager, I'm not a supervisor, I should get overtime pay. Mm-hmm. Or we're seeing more and more people come in and complaining about a toxic work environment or harassment on the part of their boss. And, and more and more what they're doing is they're showing me their, their BlackBerry or their iPhone or whatever it is, and saying, look, here's an email from my boss at 9 o'clock at night, here's one at 11.30, here's one from on Saturday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And the expectation is that I answer. And if I don't, then I get reamed out. So a lot of people are either going on stress leave or contemplating or starting harassment claims just because of the email bombardment. And will they win? Uh, they, I'll give you the usual lawyer's answer if it depends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they definitely have, there's definitely a basis for that. Uh, you know, it depend on the facts, depend on the nature of the position, depend on how much email, et cetera. Uh, but there have been cases, including one involving, uh, oh, it was one of the banks. I'm drawing a blank now. I think it was Bank of Montreal, uh, where a worker was just overwhelmed with work. And that was email and a bunch of other things, too. Uh, but courts have said even a manager who, in theory, can be expected to work unlimited hours, if too much work is piled onto them, that can constitute a toxic workplace or harassment and a breach of the employment contract. So there is a potential claim there in addition to the overtime claim. We have Stuart Redner on the phone with us uh, and employment lawyer who we're discussing, uh, you know, kind of taking the weekend off from emailing. Uh, Stuart's a partner at Redner McDonald LLP. So, and you mentioned this just a second ago, that this is, this is you know, causing uh, not just resentment, but work-related stress. Uh, a study found that those doing work after hours were more likely to report at least one health problem, raising, uh, ranging from, you know, a, a psychological to cardiovascular to gastrointestinal, and that, that the work-life balance affecting people's sleep and focus makes them be, really start to kind of resent their place of employment and, and not like their jobs anymore. So really counterproductive if it when it comes to kind of you know building up a team and getting the best results well absolutely and that's the thing that we often tell our clients is a you you may create a legal liability but as well you want to be an employer of choice and if your staff are going around telling everyone that it's a miserable place to work and even when they're at home they can never really get away from work then you're going to have a lot of trouble recruiting the, the best talent yeah absolutely so do you um do you think this is going to this is going to kind of spread this concept? This okay, you know, will companies start to pick up on this and use that as kind of a selling feature? I mean, you know, Google has a slide, and uh, you know, BlackBerry, Black, BlackBerry has free Blackberries, and uh, Rogers TV we have free mugs and lots of other perks. Like that. But like, is this something that people will catch on to and using use it as a selling feature to, for for their company that they value your work life balance, they value your family time, and that you won't be interrupted with uh, emails? I think if if companies are smart, they will. I mean, on the one hand, you know, they should take these steps just to protect themselves from liability. So you want to put policies in place. And we work with our clients all the time to have clear email policies about when and how often or how quickly you're expected to respond. And the policy will differ depending on the nature of the position. Obviously, your executives will be different than Mm -hmm. your line workers or your clerical staff. But I, I expect to see more and more companies putting policies in place that delineate when you have to respond to email when you have to check it, et cetera. And if they're smart, they'll do exactly what you just said. They'll make it a selling point uh, and say, you know, maybe we have a slide or we give away mugs. But we also <laughs> value your work-life balance. We want you to have time with your family. We don't expect you. And in fact, we are telling you that you will not be expected to read or respond to emails on the weekends. Fascinating stuff. I hope that uh, I hope up next is uh, a movement for the six-hour workday. <laughs> Works in Sweden. I think it could work here. <laughs> or the four-day work day. I'd be up for that as well. Absolutely. Stuart Redner, employment lawyer and co-founder at Redner McDonald LLP. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks very much. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.